Hello everyone, this is JD Calderon and this is Indie Comics Explained and today I'm going to be taking a look at Lev Grossman's The Magicians. Now this is this story is uh, The Magicians Alice, Alice's story, uh, adapted or written by Lila Sturgis and illustrated by Pius Bach. Now just to preface a few things, uh, this was originally a prose novel or this is adapted from a prose novel novel but it's also been made into its own thing because the original novel is not Alice is one of the main characters but the main story is actually about a character named Quentin which also features in this story there's also a TV show it's run four seasons so far their fifth season will be coming up I believe early next year they tend to release them in January I'm a fan of both the prose novels and the TV show, and it's because of the prose novels that I've watched the TV show. I read the prose novels a few years ago. I remember I had the first novel sitting on my desk, well, sitting on my shelf, probably for a good couple of years before I even looked at it. And I remember when I first grabbed it, I read it. I read a couple of pages, really didn't grab me at the time. Put it down. Had to uh, take, I had a meeting out in Long Island. And I had to take a long train ride. I said, oh, you know, what am I going to grab? I said, oh, let me try this thing again. And on that train ride, I just absolutely fell in love with the book. Once I got deeper into it. And the thing is, is uh, there are two other pieces uh, to that series. And I think I read all three books in about seven days. And the only reason it took me even that long is because I had to wait for Amazon to, to deliver the other two books one at a time. Because I, I ordered <laughs> the second one and then I ordered the third one separately once I finished the second one and that added a few extra days so I, I actually burned through them quite of, kind of on the quick side uh, which I haven't done in a long time with prose novels probably since uh, my mid to early 20s where I was voraciously reading a book or two a week sometimes three it depends uh, now I'm, I'm really slow when it comes down to prose novels I'm just reading so many uh, graphic novels and so many uh, uh, comics and that sort of thing that I have very, I've have very little time for prose novels, even though I have to start making more time for them. There are a lot of great ones out there, I just haven't had a chance to read them. But the Magicians was the last set that I read that just struck me as something really good. Basically, the um, premise is is you have these people who have just graduated um, from high school and they're going into college. Now, in the TV show, they are actually have already graduated from college, and they're going um, to graduate school. So they're a little bit, they're even older than these guys. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, the exploration of self, who you are as you grow up, who you're becoming, what you want to explore, that sort of thing, and who you want to become, and the people you surround yourself with, and just self-discovery. It's like Harry Potter except a little bit older so there's sex there's drugs there's um alcohol you know everything you you know you can imagine that you know some young goofy kids are going to do in high college uh is going to do you know pretty much things we've all done when we were that age just trying to discover who we are and what we want to do now the thing that's interesting about uh the magician's alice's story is that it runs the same course as Quentin's story in the original novel is just done from Alice's perspective. So you get a lot more of Alice in it. And it's interesting to see it, to see how it, it differentiates just a little bit. It, there's a little bit more focus on Penny. Penny is another character in the uh, group. He is Quentin's rival for a while. Something happens to him, he has to take off and it also shows um not as much interaction with Jeanette and Elliot 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 is also Elliot and Jeanette are two important characters in the story they become very important in the story um honestly I like this book I personally felt um I probably would have enjoyed it more if it had just been a straight adaptation of the novel although like I said this was good I I like Pius Back's work, as well as Lila Sturgis. Lila Sturgis is an incredible writer. I first saw her work when she was working with Bill Willingham, I believe, 
It was a Fable spinoff. It was Jack of Fables, uh, which was really good. Excellent work. And I think I've read some of her other work uh, early on, and it was also all incredible. But the basic... Uh, it, the story surrounds them, this group of characters, and it, it surrounds this imaginary world of Fillory. Uh, Fillory is, I guess, a cipher for Alice in Wonderland. And... In this world, you know, these kids travel to this world, but they eventually find out that Fillory is re real through the uh, through Penny. Penny has a special ability, which is very special amongst magicians. He's able to travel between uh, places and uh, and worlds. So the thing is, is that it's a very um, dangerous act that he's committing because he can pop himself onto a world that where there's no air. So he has to be very careful as to what he does, how he does it, and so on and so forth. So he has to know where he's going. But he finds his way to a midway point between all the different worlds. And it's a strange place where they have all of these different fountains. And then you can go into the each fountain leads to its own world. And they go into the one that leads them to Fillory. And they find this magical world with talking animals. And the world has been uh, taken over. Um by an evil villain i don't want to go too much into it i don't want to spoil the story it is great it's something you know fantastic to live through to go through with these characters um you know and the things that happens to alice and you know you can see some of the artwork and some of the craziness that's going on so it, it's it's a lot of fun i i really enjoyed it I enjoyed, like I said, I mean, I would say, if you're going to read this, I would say give a shot to the novels. The novels are really good. But this is fun. They've also announced a new series that's going to be coming out uh, from, I believe it's Archaea. That's going to be, I think, a whole new setup. It's going to be a completely spin-off series, whole new characters, just based in the world. You know, probably with new adventures and filler or that sort of thing. And maybe they'll come up with a whole new world for them to, to, uh, to, to explore. Um, like I said, along with this, I also watched the TV show. TV show is excellent. Um, if you are interested in watching the TV show or if you <laughs> um, haven't finished watching the fourth season, I suggest you bail now because I'm probably going to spoil a few things for you. So I'll uh, give you a few seconds to log off. So if you want, you got one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to spoil it. So. In the fourth season, something happened that I found um, both interesting, shocking, a little disappointing, um, and and sad, ultimately. Uh, they, they killed off the character of Quentin, Quentin Coldwater. In the novels, it's his story. You know, all of the characters have their own stories, but he is the main person he's the one that drives the story forward he was the huge Fillory fan that um carried that story with him throughout life and when he finally made it to Fillory it was very interesting to see how he took on the role of a uh, hero and questing and all that stuff and how knowledgeable he was in it because he was so interested in the books the author and the family was based around By them killing him, there was an ultimate conclusion in the novels that I that will be interesting to see how they tackle that in the TV show. Quentin was supposed to do a very specific thing at the end, and I'm again I'm not going to discuss it. I would rather you go out and read it and enjoy it for yourself. But he does a very specific thing, and. It's going to be interesting to see how they, they uh, deal with that. I, I read a couple of interviews. I've seen a couple of interviews. The uh, actor who plays Quentin, uh, it was said that he wanted to move on, do some Broadway shows. I mean, he, he seems like an actor's actor. He seems like, like that kind of guy. Well, I mean, ultimately, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what, what, what transpires after this. So it's going to be interesting, if nothing else. So... That's it for me. I mean, you know, like I said, this is um, a definite recommend, but it's a recommend with a bit of an add-on that I would definitely say that this is an interesting add-on to read with the novels. So 
and I would actually read the novels first. Um, or this. I mean, I, 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 I would imagine you could read either one. But I would definitely read the novels to go along with this. Because I think you're going to be missing a lot of the story. If you just read this book, there's a lot missing. And I'm pretty sure there's a reason they didn't want to do the novel if they did do the novel. This particular graphic novel, I think this is 200 plus pages, uh, which is pretty healthy in size. If they did the novel, this thing would have probably been 500 pages. It would have probably have been massive. So, and they didn't break this up into a comic book series. They never printed this as individual issues. They just printed it as one book, which kind of surprises me that they didn't just do... A monthly comic just break it up into how, however many corresponding spark parts it needs to be broken into um, comic books are considered um, the individual issues are considered a loss lead for this type of book you know you you try to make a little bit of money on on that end maybe enough to cover some of your production costs so then when you finally get to this portion of it um, you this is where you're gonna make your actual money this is gonna be your bread and butter right here but I don't know if for some reason they wanted to do it this way. I don't know if it was something from Lev Grossman. Maybe that was the agreement they had. They could just do a graphic novel. Or maybe they... I don't know how much... Um, I don't know how much cajoling they had to do to get this from him. To get this property. But this is firmly based on the books and has nothing to do with the TV show. In the TV show, uh, it has a bit more of a diverse cast when it comes down to... The look of the characters. I mean, like, I think Penny uh, here um, is this guy right here with the green hair, green mohawk. So he's kind of like a punk rocker. Whereas Penny in the TV show, I believe he's Indian. Um, so, you know, so he's a darker skinned gentleman, you know, who has <laughs> a bit of a mean attitude, kind of hates Quentin. Um, and in that show, it, it really shows. Here, I mean, they get into a fight, and, they, and in the books, they, it's pretty mean. But I think in the TV show, it was taken, it was just really ramped up. Uh, they did a really good job of them uh, not like uh, not liking one another. But eventually, they do step back. They do something occurs where um, they just, you know, I can't say they reconcile so much as just things change. Uh, also, the character of Juliet. Uh, Juliet, um, oh, Jeanette, excuse me, isn't, um, she's, I don't know what she is, but she's definitely not, you know, she's definitely not a blonde <laughs> or, or redhead, uh, statuesque type of woman. She's, I think, a little bit shorter, darker, more olive skinned and, uh, with dark brown hair. Um, so it was interesting. So yeah, so this one has nothing to do with the TV show. This is all from the books. And then there's another character in here that's in here for a little while. Her name is Julia. Julia also takes up a huge part. She's basically, if you read the novel, she's basically the second book. And her story is fascinating. It's excellent, excellent stuff. And it runs parallel to what basically goes on in the first book. So in the first book, you have Quentin's story along with, with um, Alice, Penny, Jeanette. Elliot and Josh, right? Where and then this other character, Julia, is going through her own situation, which is covered in the second book, and it runs parallel. And it's just a really, really awesome story. I mean, it's tragic, really good stuff. Uh, Lev Grossman just knocked it out the park with these books. I love these books, and I also enjoy the TV show. It is a little different. There are things that are different, but it is very good. The acting is excellent. I love the characters. It very flamboyant, very over the top, great stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to the fifth season. Like I said, uh, Lila Surge is going to be writing a new comic book series. I don't, I don't know if Pius Bach is going to be the um, artist, um, but I'm looking forward to the first trade. I will definitely be picking it up, uh, and I will definitely be reviewing it. Or, you know, unlike saying a review, I like to say recommending it if it deserves a recommendation. I'll definitely be recommending it. So. Thank you so much, guys. If you like the uh, video, please hit the like button, subscribe, do all those great things. And, you know, if you want to read some of my work, you can check out the Oswald Chronicles or check out Tall Tales online. And I'll be talking to you soon. Have a good night.